Hey guys, Pastor Anthony, I am back. And today we've got a really special message. This is a message straight from God, all right? And I know you guys, you know, might want to see a miracle and um, you can believe or not believe this is a miracle or not. But oftentimes whenever I pray, I will tell God to speak to me through the Bible, okay? And I will hold up an empty Bible in front of him and I, t and I close my eyes and I flip through the Bible and just open it. And, and he can show me what he wants to show me that day. Well, specifically, I asked and I prayed this morning. I said, Lord, what do you want me to tell your people today? And this is what come up. And it's an amazing miracle um, because he had previously told me a lot about this um, in because I do this often. Um, but I never got this exact thing before. <laughs> Um, but he has shown me that I'm, you know, close to the what his other people were in Jesus' name. He he always goes, you know, from one to the other, to the one to the other, to the other, to the other of his people and telling his people that um, he is coming, that he is um, j judging, that they're, you know, this is the time, this is the end times in Jesus' name, um, everything. So, as you can see here, it... He brought me to Isaiah 40, okay? And actually, I'm going to tell the truth. He, dropped me, he brought me to Isaiah 40, um, 14, you know, um, on that page. But I went back and I went back to the exact, you know, where it started in Jesus' name. And this is where it started. So, um, I'm going to tell you this message, guys. This is straight from God, okay? This is not from me. This is not from me. I prayed. He showed me this page. He wanted me to say it because it says exactly what he wants to say in Jesus name. Um, I also went through and I, and I went through and I looked at uh, Jesus unraveled and I pulled uh, parts of Jesus unraveled out to show you where Jesus said these exact same things <laughs> that um, Isaiah said as well. Um, and so guys, without ado, here we go. Uh, my name is pastor Anthony. This is what God said this morning in Jesus name. So, God said, comfort, yes, comfort my people. Says your God, speak comfort Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord handle, excuse me, received from the Lord's hand double for all sins. Sorry about that. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Now, this sounds like it's pretty self-explanatory what he's talking about, but it, it's actually representing a lot of things, okay? This is what the Holy Spirit's been telling me. Is It says, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God, okay? Straight in the desert would be places that were... Um, basically left out, people that were left out, people that were left out in the rain, people that were, you know, um, rejected, people, you know, they're making a place in that area for a highway for, for God because we have, we have soil, they have soil, really good soil to plant into, and that's what he's going after in Jesus' name. Um, so that's why he says that. And it says, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. Well, the valley are the low, you know, obviously a valley and a mountain looks like, you know, the valley is the low part will be exalted and the mountain will be brought low. The mountain will be removed in Jesus' name. Um, so the people who are, th think they're at the top of the mountain, think they're the great in, great in the world will be low. People who are low in the world will go high in Jesus' name. And that's what he's saying. And the crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. Okay, crooked places are things that are out of out of ordinary. Um, crooked, they're, they're you know they're bad, they're evil, they're out of ordinary. They're not they're not supposed to be there. You know, they're they're afflictions on his people. Um, those places will be made smooth. Okay, will be made straight, and the rough places will be made will be made smooth. You know, things that you know are weighing heavily on people and holding them down and all that, all those rough things that are in your life, they'll be made smooth in Jesus' name. Um, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Okay, so that's one thing, that's a good thing in Jesus' name. Um, now Jesus uh, went on and he talked about this um, uh, in a parable that he did, um, talking about two men who went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. 
I thank you, God, that I am not a sinner like everyone else. For I don't cheat, I don't sin, and I don't commit adultery. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you this, the sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Luke 18, 9. All right. Peter and James exclaimed this to their disciples after Jesus' resurrection, also here in 1 Peter 5, 5, James 4, 6. So it, so it was a very highly sought after thing that Jesus said. Okay. And then you can see that the, the, the Pharisee, you know, was up on the mountain. He was up here. And so he was being brought down low because he didn't wasn't accepted by God because he strained out a gnat and swallowed a camel. <laughs> you know, once again, another another parable, and I like to use it a lot because people strain out the two laws and then they swallow the, the 150 laws that, you know, came down from Moses or actually actually that they made up off of Moses' laws in Jesus' name, 150 off of 10. Um, so we'll move on. All right, so now we go to... For the mouth of the Lord is spoken. The voice said, Cry out, he said, Why, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, you, bring who, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem. You who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. In Jesus' name. And Jesus exclaimed as well, All flesh is grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flowers fall and its flowers fall away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. 1 Peter 1.24. See? Jesus said the exact same thing. Okay? Um We'll move on. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his, re his reward is with him, and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in balance, who has directed the spirit of the Lord as his counselor has taught him, with whom... Did he take counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge, and who showed him the way of understanding? All right. Now Jesus said the same thing. O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I say to you, you shall, be, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Matthew 23, 37. Alright, move on with Isaiah. Behold, the nations are a drop, as a drop in a bucket, and are counted as a small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its bees sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom they, then will they liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman molds an image. The goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains on it. Whether is too impoverished for such a contribution, chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? All right. This is basically about idols, obviously. Okay. Anything that is built by man could be an idol in Jesus' name. And that's what he's saying, that you're, you're looking after these things, these idols that are built by men. It can be cars, planes, trains. You know, um, whatever, you know, whatever is built by man, you know, if you're in, and you can also idolize people as, as well, because so that's what I'm saying. Any, any idol, any idol, any carved idol, you can make, you know, statues of people and idolize them in Jesus name. Those are all idols in Jesus name. You're supposed to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And the first Jesus, Jesus first commanded encompasses that the two commandments that show these two things that, that was just told by Isaiah. 
Thou shalt not have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. In Jesus' name. So, move on back to Isaiah. Is it he who sits above the circle of the earth, and inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in? He brings the princes to nothing, makes the judge of the earth youthless, useless. Scarcely shall they be planted, scarcely shall they be sown, scarcely shall they take stock, take root in the earth, when he will also blow them, and they will wither, and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. Okay, now this is talking about the end times right here. <laughs> Um, it's also very, uh, very awesome that he basically tells in this, in this right here, God tells Isaiah that the, the, the stretch, the heavens are stretched out. Um, and we now know in science that the heavens stretch out. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. They, at that time, Isaiah did not know that they know that they know that the universe is expanding now. So the heavens are stretched out, um, And here's what Jesus said. Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and I will deceive and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. Matthew twenty four three, Mark thirteen three. All right. So this is right here. It ends right here. Earth, earthquake in various places. All these are the beginning of the sorrows. That is now, guys. This is right now. Okay. This is where Jesus is talking about. This is now. Um, the tribulation is after the revival. Okay. So there's going to be a, a revival in between that, in between the, all these are the beginning of the sorrows. And then they will deliver you up tribulation and kill you that you have a revival first. Okay. There's a revival, um, in the, I think it's the second seal. And then the third seal is famine. And so in those seven years you have a revival. Okay. So if you, we have three and a half year, we have, you know, some time to come to God so he can protect you during the famine. So come to God, learn who he is right now. This is a time guys right now in Jesus name. Uh, so you can protect yourself from the famine so you can protect your family in Jesus name. So you can love those that, that need to be loved. So you can love your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love all your neighbors as yourself. All right, moving back to Isaiah. To whom then will, will you liken me or whom, to, or to whom shall I be equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by number? He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. That's once again exalting the low and bringing down the high. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In Jesus' name. And Jesus says right here, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel to the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come, which is what I'm trying to do now, is preach it all to all the nations so everybody can choose which one they are. Are they light or are they dark? You know, which one are they going to do? Are they going to take the two choices, love your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself and become a man of Christ, become a daughter of Christ, become a people of Christ, become a family of Christ, have the kingdom of earth, kingdom of heaven come on this earth through his people in Jesus name. Or are you going to go with the enemy and try to take them down try to take all the people of Christ down because you're angry, angry because you're bitter because you have all these demons that are that are tormenting you that you don't want to give up in Jesus name. Or you don't want to give up your life, even though your life is going to be gone within within seven years, basically, because the enemy is going to take it in Jesus name and, and then put you into tribulation. 
So here's here's God in Job 47. Okay, this is him speaking. Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Would you indeed annul my judgment? Would you contempt, condemn me that you that I'm sorry. Would you condemn me that you may be justified? Have you an arm like God or can you thunder with a voice like his? This adorn yourself with majesty and splendor and array yourself with glory and beauty. Disperse the rage of your wrath. Look on everyone who is proud and humble him. Look on everyone who is proud and bring him low. Tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together. Bind their faces in hidden darkness. Then I will confess to you that your own right hand can save you. Job 47. All right, guys, this is the message from God. This is the one he wanted me to put out today. Take it how you will. But as you can see, he's serious. This is a time of judgment, guys. This is a time in Jesus' name. This is the second seal. Anger. You can see there's a lot of anger out there. All these anger. This is the, the second seal is anger. Okay, this is what the, the enemy is doing is anger, putting anger out there, all this bitterness, anger, judgment, all this stuff of anger. We have to look past it and love your neighbor as yourself in Jesus' name. Don't fall into that in Jesus' name. Don't let your anger and your bitterness cause people harm. Pray for people who persecute you. Pray that they come to their knees in Jesus' name. Pray that they come to God, and then they'll come and, come and apologize to you for whatever they did in Jesus' name. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, human. <laughs> um, anyways, um, I'm Pastor Anthony. I love you guys. This is the reason why I'm doing this, Okay. I have, I'm close to God, guys, and that's just, and that's not by my doing. That's by God's doing. Okay, uh, I'm not lying to you guys. I'm not lying to you guys. Just like John the Baptist wasn't lying. This is what this is. John the Baptist um, lying up here, uh, make straight uh, in the desert a highway for our God. Same thing, you know. Um, I'm not John the Baptist. I'm not reincarnated or anything. It's just I'm just one of his people. I'm just one of God's people. I'm just one of the people that God raised up. That's all there is to it. Um, and just as just as John was going towards, was uh, using Isaiah's words, you know, I'm using Isaiah's words and same and the exact same thing because that's what God led me to in Jesus' name. So I'm Pastor Anthony. Um, I love you guys. This is the reason why I'm doing this. I really want you to come into the fold. I really want you to do to make these two choices. They're just choices. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's choices. And then you just you know have actions off of your choices and that and just look at that choice every time you go to do something in jesus name and then you repent for whatever you're doing in jesus name and turn away from it that's all you have to do in jesus name come to god go to god in your secret place not to man you don't got to go to man you can, you can go to god you don't have to go to anybody and tell them what you did you can just go to god in jesus name and repent for it and turn away from it and you are redeemed of it it's washed away in jesus name as long as you don't do it again in jesus name and if you do it again then you repent for it and then you keep on doing it keep on you know like i said repent for it eventually the holy spirit will, will make it where you don't do it in jesus name and then you will stop having to go through that lesson in jesus name <laughs> um i'm pastor anthony i love you guys have a great day you are blessed in jesus name